The locking compression plate, LCP for short, is a new development of a screw plate system that allows the combination of standard plate technology and locking screws with angular stability. The special characteristics of the LCP are angular stability in combination with interfragmentary compression. In addition to conventional indications, the LCP is particularly well suited for the treatment of juxtaarticular fractures and for osteoporotic bone, as well as for the use of percutaneous techniques. This three-fragment fracture of the proximal humerus B3 in a 55-year-old woman shows a metaphysial zone with multiple fractures. How can this fracture be treated optimally? In the compression plating technique with conventional screws, primary stability is achieved by the compression between the plate and the bone. Cyclic loading can cause the loss of primary stability. On the one hand, due to axial tilting in the absence of medial bone support, and on the other hand, due to loosening of the screws in osteoporotic bone. Preference should be given to a system where screws that lock in the plate are used. This system prevents axial tilting and screw loosening. The combination hole of the LCP allows the insertion of standard screws as well as locking head screws. The dimensions of this newly designed hole are similar to those of the compression plate hole. The LCP hole is divided into two parts. The dynamic compression part accepts both cortex and cancellous bone screws. Locking head screws are locked in the part of the hole with the conical thread. Compared to a standard screw, the locking head screw is designed as follows. The head of the locking head screw features a double thread. This allows it to lock in the plate. The thread pitch is the same as the pitch on the shaft. The locking head screw has a larger core diameter than the standard screw, as it has to endure higher bending moments. Biomechanics In the conventional technique, tightening of a screw presses the plate onto the bone. The contact pressure causes friction which enhances primary stability significantly. The locking head screw is locked in the plate, thus preventing the bone from being pulled towards the plate. This protects the periost and maintains the blood supply to the bone. The forces are transmitted from the bone to the screws, from the screws to the plate, and then over the screws on the opposite side of the fracture and back to the bone. The stability of the internal fixation does not require any friction between the plate and the bone. Loss of primary reduction. When using conventional screws, it is essential that the plate be adapted exactly to the bone surface. Otherwise, tightening the screws can cause the loss of primary reduction. The reduction is maintained by fixing the plate with locking head screws. Therefore, the plate does not have to be contoured precisely. Loss of secondary reduction. In the absence of supporting bone, a secondary displacement of a fracture stabilized with the plate and standard screws can occur under cyclic load once the absolute compression between the plate and the bone is missing. Fixation of the plate with locking head screws in the sense of an internal fixator can prevent this loss of secondary reduction. In osteoporotic bone, the screws are inadequately anchored and can loosen under cyclic loading, which also means loss of reduction. 
the stable connection between the locking head screws and the plate can prevent this from happening. Features of the LCP. Used with standard screws, the LCP has all the possibilities and properties of the conventional plates, such as reduction through the plate, interfragmentary compression by means of plate lag screws or dynamic compression. In addition to this, the outstanding features of the LCP used in combination with locking screws are the following. No loss of primary reduction because insertion of the locking screw does not pull the bone towards the plate. Secondary reduction loss is minimized, particularly in osteoporotic bone. Use of the LCP as a compression plate. The LCP hole is asymmetrical. The orientation of the hole changes in the middle of the plate. In simple fractures, the LCP can be applied as a compression plate using the conventional technique. Compression by the eccentric placement of the screws. Axial compression, as in conventional plates, can be achieved by placing the screws eccentrically in the dynamic compression portion of the plate hole. Compression by bending the plate. Bending the plate at the level of the transverse fracture enhances axial compression. Compression by using a plate lag screw. In an oblique fracture, the use of an interfragmentary plate lag screw contributes significantly to stability. To perform eccentric and neutral pre-drilling for standard screws, the universal drill sleeve has to be used. In eccentric pre-drilling, the universal drill sleeve is placed on the edge of the dynamic compression or DC portion of the combination hole. Pressing the universal drill sleeve into the hole allows neutral pre-drilling. DCP and LCDCP universal drill sleeves are unsuitable for the LCP. Use of the LCP as an internal fixator. To do so, the plate has to be fixed with locking head screws only, and the fracture zone will not be touched, but merely bridged. As shown, precise contouring of the plate is not necessary. Locking head screws can be inserted monocortically in the diaphyseal zone of long bones. A clinical example. Here, a 30-year-old motorcyclist with a multifragmentary first-degree open olecranon fracture with dislocation of the head of the radius, the Montegia mechanism, AO classification B1, and an ipsilateral humeral shaft fracture. The intraoperative x-rays confirm the anatomical reconstruction of the proximal ulna and the correct positioning of the head of the radius. After eight weeks, there's an anatomical bone situation of progressive consolidation and an almost perfect clinical function of the elbow, but still with a slight extension deficit. Two types of locking head screws are available. The self-tapping locking head screw on the left is used primarily where exact length measurement is required, mainly in the epimetaphyseal area. The appropriate drill bit has to be used to pre-drill for these screws. The self-drilling, self-tapping locking head screw on the right is used where no length measurement is necessary, mainly in the diaphyseal area. These screws are exclusively inserted monocortically. Use of the LCP in the combination technique. In many situations, the combined use of standard and locking head screws provides advantages. In simple juxta-articular fractures, the joint block can be fixed primarily by using a few locking head screws. After the reduction through the plate, dynamic compression can be applied to the fracture by inserting a standard screw in an eccentrically drilled hole. The insertion of two self-drilling screws concludes the internal fixation. 
The LCP can also provide advantages in simple diaphyseal fractures. Here is an isolated fracture of a radial shaft. This is the anatomically correct stable situation after five weeks. In a complex diaphyseal fracture, stabilized with a bridging LCP used as an internal fixator, plate lag screws allow the large projecting fragments to be pulled closer. This is illustrated by the treatment of a C3 complex femoral shaft fracture of a young multiply injured motorcyclist with an ipsilateral acetabular fracture. The fracture is stabilized by bridging. A large medial shaft fragment is now pulled into position and fixed with a lag screw. The post-operative x-ray shows the correct axis and length fixation. After seven months, the anatomical axial alignment remains unchanged, and the callus formation bridging the individual shaft fragments can be recognized, especially in the lateral projection. The LCP for the small fragment system. Here are the available LC plates of the 3.5 system. Right-angled and oblique-angled T-plates, cloverleaf plates, LC-LCP, and reconstruction plates. The LCP for the large fragment system. These are the available LC plates of the 4.5 5.0 system. T plates, T and L buttress plates. The narrow and broad limited contact LCP and reconstruction plates. Osteosynthesis using an LCP, the example of a distal radius fracture. An 83-year-old woman with multiple injuries, including this distal intraarticular and badly shortening C3 fracture of the radius with ulna dislocation and severe osteoporosis. Emergency stabilization is achieved by means of a wrist bridging external fixator. This is the simplified fracture model with a longitudinal splitting of the joint block and a circular metaphysial zone with multiple fractures. The joint block is reduced and preliminarily stabilized using reduction forceps. Retention is by means of a K-wire. The selected five-hole 3.5 right-angled LCP T-plate is inserted. The threaded drill guide can be used to manipulate the plate. The plate can be pulled towards the distal shaft and fixed using a cortex screw inserted through the oval hole of the plate. The threaded drill guide is now inserted into the distal T-arm. In the juxta-articular zone, the threaded holes of certain LCPs are not aligned orthogonally with the surface of the plate. This allows the screws to be seated as close as possible to the joint without perforating the cartilage. Drilling is performed using the 2.8 millimeter drill bit. The length is measured. And the selected locking head screw is inserted using a power tool and the torque limiting attachment. Loosening of the first screw allows fine reduction through the plate. Final fixation of the LCP to the shaft is performed ideally by means of locking head screws. An internal fixation with correct axial alignment and length has been achieved. The locking compression plate, the latest standard in plating osteosynthesis. The LCP provides angular stability in combination with interfragmentary compression. In addition to all conventional indications, the LCP is particularly suited for the treatment of juxta-articular fractures and for osteoporotic bone, as well as for the use of percutaneous techniques.